Welcome to another episode of Real Skate Stories. I'm TR. I filmed and edited the Speed Wheels videos. On today's episode, we revisit Eric Dressen's Speed Freaks part from Santa Cruz Speed Wheels. Speed Freaks! Speed Wheels was headed by Richard Metaver. He had a really good knack for picking out good team riders from all the different companies because at this point in time, not many people made wheels. We had a really amazing team. So for Speed Freaks, I was given a list of riders, their phone numbers, a van, a couple boxes of wheels and t-shirts, cameras, and blank videotapes. So this was before the days of email or cell phones. I would call people up on the phone make an appointment to meet them, and then we'd film their part in one, two, or three days, depending on how many spots they had and how much they wanted to skate. I had a few months to shoot and edit the entire video. The cameras were super clunky by today's standards. This was actually the year that Super VHS came out, which was double resolution from regular VHS, and I shot Speed Freaks on a Panasonic AG450, for all the long lens and tripod work, and Sony CCD V90, and some JVC Super VHS Compact cameras as well. I would transfer the camera tapes to three quarter inch video, and then I would edit everything on three quarter inch U-Matic broadcast. When I looked at the list of team writers I was going to film for this video, I was pretty blown away. And when I saw Eric's name, I was super amped. Eric was one of my favorite skaters. I love how fast he skated and how he combined a surf style with all of his skate tricks. I also knew this would be his first video part as he rode for Dogtown, who at that point in time had not made any videos. It was remarkable that he hadn't had a video part yet as he was ranked number one in the world street. So right off the bat, from the first moment skating together at Kenter, I told him I wanted to shoot a bunch of high speed follow stuff really close and he was into it. I wanted to try a couple crossover angles and we were just kind of coming up with ideas as we were filming and he was down for everything. A lot of people always ask me how I got the footage so smooth because of course this was way before the days of gimbals and the cameras were actually pretty big. I had a lot of practice actually filming videos before this and was even doing this surfing on waves and my technique was always really concentrating on keeping the camera steady while I used my legs and my hips to absorb all the shocks. So that's why when I ollie those stairs in the hallway, it looks so smooth. After shooting out of the hallway, we had so much speed and Eric D slid out and I was right behind him and I tumbled right over him. Camera got destroyed, but we grabbed another and kept on filming. The reason why I cut that part was I wanted to edit it so that everything looked continuous, as flowing as possible. I was super stoked that Eric wanted to do a bunch of tributes to the Z-Boys, throwing down Burt's and full surf style moves. And he put the benches out to simulate the Hal Jepsen go for it tube ride footage, which was really cool because at that time I actually worked for Hal Jepsen and was friends with Craig Halley who shot the original Go For It tube sequence. I always liked to skate with people as they warmed up and kind of find their comfort zone and then play to their strengths. Depending on someone's personality, I would almost get into a coaching role, suggest tricks that they could do, variations, things that might look good. Eric was really into that. He would ask a lot of questions, ask for a lot of suggestions. The result were a lot of NBDs in this part. Street skating at this point in time was brand new. The industry was still geared mainly towards vert and ramp and pool riders. So all the street skating was super fresh and new. A new trick would be invented every month. This was right when handrails were just first starting to be done. Being able to shoot on the video format was something I did not take for granted. Before shooting on film, you had to be real choosy about when you pulled the trigger. With video, you could just let it roll. So I was always on the lookout for weird people and different characters who I could approach and possibly get some classic candid footage of. 
I would get pretty close and actually provoked a lot of incidents. I rolled up on that guy in Venice and he actually started getting kind of pissed off. You could tell by the end, he's, he's kind of rushing me. I love how he tells Dee, it's not going to be your life. Skateboarding is no big deal. All right. I mean, once you can do it, you can do it. You try to get better. But it's not going to be your life. D laughs as if he already knew it would be his life. A lot of good skateboarders, you know. You think you can make a living skateboarding? Oh, that bank spot by the freeway was full surf style skateboarding. His flow and his pop and his style just blew my mind. His skating combined Hosoi with Nadas, and I even saw a little bit of Tommy G in there with some surf style slashing of Aaron Murray and Scott Oster mixed in. They called this the Brady Bunch pool and had a super hardcore sketchy lip had to really power through any kind of grind tricks. Oh, and the Vans mini ramp, we had so much fun. We showed up in the morning, there's nobody there, and just had the ramp to ourselves. He had so many tricks that, although I wanted to edit it like one continuous run, it got to a point in the editing process where I had to just start doing fast single cuts because there was just that many tricks. We were just bouncing ideas off each other and coming up with lip tricks and variations and he was just so on point it seemed like he could just do anything he wanted. Well thanks a lot everyone for tuning in. We're going to be doing another raw version of this. I just found a box with all the old camera tapes from Speed Freaks so keep checking in some fun stuff coming down the pipes. Now let's watch the part in its entirety. Sorry, down, Sam. Yesterday. I mean, once you can do it, you can do it. You try to get better, but it's not going to be your life. A lot of good skateboarders, you know. You think you can make a living skateboarding? Just another form of game. That's all it is. You get the point? Yeah. All right.